Good evening, everyone. And to our friends in the old hall, a very good evening too. One word by way of intimation at the start of the service. All the ministers and the press who received a communication from the press to Clark this past week. The press to Clark has received several complaints from individuals about local congregations not keeping socially distanced after church services and mingling after, after worship. So I wrote back to the Presbytery Clark to tell him that I was the guiltiest person of all because I was very guilty of mingling after services. So unfortunately, we we'll need to be very, even more careful than normal and not mingle after our services in the future. And so I'm sorry about that. It's, it's very difficult not to, but we'll need to maintain it um, to follow the Church of Scotland guidelines and to follow the government's guidelines. Finally, Christmas Eve. This night of all nights, this night of mystery and darkness and wonder. On this night of all nights, in the wake of all the buying and the anxieties, and in the wake of the disappointments that this year is very, very different indeed, you're most welcome here, whoever you are and wherever you've come from. The town falls silent tonight, and now you can settle down in this holy space, this place of ancient stones, where an enduring story has been proclaimed for over a hundred years. Of course, you may have a few presents still to wrap, or something to prepare for the special meal tomorrow. But for the most part, Christmas is ready. The weeks of waiting are over, the cars have arrived, and too bad if you've received one that you haven't sent, should have sent this year, too late. But this is a night when we can pause and draw breath as the world waits quietly for a birth. And now it's time to sing to ourselves some of the well-loved carols, to hear the familiar narrative, and to catch something of the awe at the tremendous gift given to us by God in the Holy Child of Bethlehem. Our opening hymn, our opening carol, was written by Mrs. Cecil Francis Alexander, the wife of the Bishop of Londonderry. Mrs. Alexander wrote several hymns because she had a recalcitrant class of very ill-behaved young boys, and she was trying to get them to listen to the gospel. And she wrote, there is a green hill far away, all things bright and beautiful. And this very well-known carol is amongst her repertoire. Once in royal David's city stood a lowly cattle shed. <laughs>
Let us pray. Christmas Eve, Lord, and we come to fill our eyes with the magic of candlelight and light sparkling on the tree. We come to fill our ears with the sound of Christmas music. It's a time to watch our children and grandchildren with excited, happy eyes troop off to bed to await the miracle of the dawn. It's the time for memories, the time to share common hopes and dreams, the time to hear the ancient story of that special baby. God of stable and stars and surprises, God of shepherds and kings, lead us towards a starlit cradle scene, a scene beguiling in its simplicity, a baby born to change our world with love. God of sleigh bells and party hats, of coloured baubles draped on trees of pine, of brightly decorated parcels, of home and firelight, open our eyes and open our hearts to all the beauty of this holy season. Sweet little holy child, coming to give us hope and life as we hum our carols and hear the story, lighten our darkness, lighten the darkness of our understanding that we may see God's gift to be shared and unwrapped by everyone. This is Christmas Eve, Lord, so different this year. And some of us are tired. Some of us are missing family, unable to come home to the family hearth and table. All of us are coping as best we can. So bring us all to Bethlehem, that we may stop and find you, the creator of the world, yet a baby amongst us, the King of kings, born to bring us to heaven. Amen. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. Christmas Gospel, as recorded by St. Luke, in chapter 2, and reading there from verse 1. St. Luke chapter 2, and at the first verse. Hear the word of God. In those days, a decree was issued by the Emperor Augustus for a census to be taken throughout the Roman world. This was the first registration of its kind. It took place when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone made his way to his own town to be registered. Joseph went up to Judea from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to register in the city of David called Bethlehem 
because he was of the house of David by descent. And with him went Mary, his betrothed, who was expecting her child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her baby. And she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them at the inn. Amen. This is the Christmas gospel. Thanks be to God. In 179, see in yonder manger low, born for us on earth below. Isn't it frustrating that we can't sing? <laughs> Next year, we'll raise the roof. Let us pray. Light in our darkness, we beseech you, O Lord, and grant upon the Christmas gospel your light may shine, that as this night the world waits with bated breath, we in this place may approach the manger of the eternal made flesh in Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Several years ago now, the Garbles in Glasgow was reckoned to be one of the worst slum areas in the whole of Western Europe. And Glasgow Corporation decided to demolish the slum dwellings and to rehouse some of the population in three multi-storey high flats which were to be designed by the most famous architect of the day, Sir Basil Spence, who designed Coventry Cathedral after it was bombed by the Luftwaffe. And when the buildings were completed, three rather dull grey high-rise flats rose from the rubble and the dust of the gorbals to tower over the remaining tenement slums. Asked why he had designed his flats in such drab colours, Sir Basil Spence explained that it was so that the buildings would blend in with the rest of Glasgow. Anyhow, he said, Glasgow was a city of smogs and fogs and dilapidated tenement dwellings, so black and grey, he said, seemed to be the natural colours to choose. Well, he didn't have to live in them. And then an argument broke out in the Glasgow City Chambers 
in George Square. What names would they give to these three new high-rise flats? Nobody could agree. So, until they made up their minds, the city fathers and the council chambers, in their infinite wisdom, decided to call them A Block, B Block, and C Block. What they hadn't reckoned on, however, was the characteristic spirit and the native wit, wit of the Glaswegian. For no sooner had they by now infamous A Block, B Block, and C Block become occupied, than they were promptly renamed this time by the tenants who were living in them. A Block became known as Alcatraz, B Block became known as Berlini, and C Block became known as Sing Sing. There is something irrepressible of the human spirit and its ability to rise above the most depressing of circumstances and to assert, even in the face of darkness and gloom, light and life and even laughter as well. And one Christmas, a few years ago now, an arresting photograph appeared on the front page of the Glasgow Herald. It was of the same three multi-story blocks in the Garble, surrounded by the wasteland, a wasteland that was full of potholes and rubble and rubbish and broken glass. And in the centre of this black and white photograph on the front of the newspaper, perched on a little slag heap of rubbish, amidst all the harsh surrounding of the garbles, there stood out bravely and proudly a little Christmas tree. No one knew how it got there. No one knew who rigged up the coloured lights which shone so brightly. No one knew who put a star on top of it. And nobody knew how they managed to plug it in to the mains electricity supply. But in the middle of that dark and dismal area, there stood that little Christmas tree, defiantly shining out its message of hope and light and love in the face of darkness. And this very strange thing is that in the middle of an area where vandalism was rife, no one harmed the little tree and no one put out its lights. For the 12 days of Christmas, that little tree shone bravely and brightly in the darkness all around. The light of Christ, the light of Christmas, undimmed. St. John tells us that the light of Christ has never been extinguished. And today it still shines in a world wracked with crisis, in a society immersed in selfishness, and greed, in hearts that are sore and troubled and afraid. And later on, it was Jesus himself who said, I am the light of the world. Those who follow me will never walk in darkness. Now, we've all had very dark days these past months. What a year 2020 has been. And we're still stumbling in the dark through the crisis of the ongoing pandemic. I know some folk who didn't want to get out of bed and face the world around them. Such was their depression. Others have been frightened in the darkness of disappointment. Folk in the congregation who have been coping with not only the pandemic, but with disease. Others who have had terrible doubts. Yet all of us meet those times, all of us, none of us escape them. And Christmas is all about the good news that even in the darkness, the light of Christ still shines. God's light in Jesus Christ shines in the dark places of our lives. The story is told of Johnny, who was five, and he was in the kitchen as his mother made supper. She asked Johnny to go into the pantry and to get her a tin of tomato soup. But he didn't want to go alone. Oh, it's so dark in there, Mum, and I'm scared. She asked him again, and again he refused. And finally she said, Johnny, listen, darling, it's okay, it's okay. 
Jesus will be there with you. So Johnny walked slowly to the pantry at the other end of the kitchen, and very quietly he opened the door and peeked inside, and indeed it was so dark. And he was going to close the door, and then, then, all at once, an idea came to him, and he said, Jesus, if you're in there, would you kindly hand me a tin of tomato soup, please? <laughs> the dark can be a very scary place indeed. And tonight, the world celebrates the light that comes into our darkness, the light that never dims. The light of Christmas says, good news, do not be afraid. God is with us, Emmanuel. Amen. The Carol 176, still the night, holy the night. Let us pray. O light of Christmas Eve, on this enchanted night, we thank you for all the lovely traditions that surround this season, enriching our lives, such simple things, yet we still get goosebumps every time. Silent night, peaceful and still, as we return to our homes, we pause to pray for those for whom this is a difficult time, the lonely, the infirm, the sick at home, in hospital, those who've lately lost a loved one and whose eyes have known tears, those who are afraid, those who are homeless, those who are hungry, those who suffer abuse. The list is so, so long, Lord. Fill the empty mangers of this world with food, Empty the cardboard boxes, refuge of the outcast and a stranger. Come, O light of Christmas, and bring warmth and peace to all, and shine into the dark recesses of our world. Through the generosity of charities and relief agencies, wipe away the tears from all those who are suffering in any way, and meet their every need. Come, O light of Christmas, dawn upon all who plan evil, all who seek to harm, all whose lives are caught up in greed and selfishness, all who foster hatred and prejudice and division. Come, O light of Christmas, shine on our troubled world. 
scattering the darkness of war, bringing peace to Syria, to the Yemen, and to that land which we call holy. Come, O light of Christmas, lead your church into a brighter tomorrow, that we may forsake religious wrangles and seek a closer bond of cooperation and love and understanding. Come, O light of Christmas, pierce the gloom of the global pandemic and through the skills of medical science, the wonderful doctors and nurses and chemists and all those involved in research, bringing healing to every nation. Come, O light of Christmas, to every home represented here tonight, and may each of us walk in your light in all our tomorrows, bringing hope and love to all whom we meet on life's road. May we be a blessing to others as you have blessed us through the one who is to come, even Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Under normal circumstances, I would have been giving you a hug and a handshake and the way out of church tonight, but we can't do that. So may I wish you and yours a very merry and happy Christmas. It may not be the Christmas we were expecting or hoping for, but the light shines on in the darkness, and that light will see us through. Remembering the words of King George VI on his Christmas broadcast when he said, give me a light to show me into the future. And the voice said, put your hand into the hand of God. That will be to you better than a light and safer than a known way. And in that faith, we go forward. God bless you all. The Carol 174, while humble shepherds watch their flocks in Bethlehem's plains by night. May he who by his holy incarnation draws together all things earthly and heavenly fill you with the devotion of Mary and Joseph, the joy of the angels, and the love of the shepherds, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you this Christmas Eve and remain with you and all those whom you love both in heaven 
and on earth, this night and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>